page six of Harper's Ferry Outlaws, Harper's Ferry Mythos. Welcome to Harper's Ferry. The land of Harper's Ferry was created eons ago by a small god with a secret name. Mythology refers to the god as Harper, but only local fae know the god's true name. The Harper made a sanctuary between two mountains and two rivers for his followers by playing a harp. The music reshaped the earth and waters, forming a peninsula hillock now known as Harper's Ferry. The pin hillock perpetually sits between the confluence of the two rivers, pointing downstream as the prow of an immortal Morithian magical mothership. The rivers come together to the east as one, through the gap in the mountains where the sun rises. The southern blood mountains and the northern blue mountains are filled with savage animals and monsters living in caves, cabins, and forts. The western castle of King Charles has a city populated by oppressive humans that tax Harper's Ferry in exchange for services and protection, or so they say. Welcome to a weird world of oddness. Fairy Mist helps protect Harper's Ferry from the outside world. It often sits on mountaintops, lurking. Sometimes it makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck. Gradually, the mist magic has waned over the years, so often the air is clear without a cloud in the sky. The land is full of outcroppings of gray slab stone, commonly known as limestone. Much of the earth in the area has tan or red clay, besides shale, black silt, and organic brown dirt. Sand is found near the banks of the rivers. In rare spots, white crystal rocks, calcium quartz, are placed by Fay to mark hidden, invisible or underground, metallic ore, treasures, graves, or fairy homes. Harper's Ferry is host to many moderate species of flora and fauna. Common types of trees include maple, oak, elm, sycamore, mulberry, hackberry, elder, beech, willow, cherry poplar, walnut, magnolia, pine, hemlock, juniper, cedar, ginkgo, catalpa, princess salanthus, and bamboo. Bushes, vines, herbs, flowers, vegetables, and grasses are all abundant as well. Many types of insects and animals live or visit. Animals include mammals like humans, cats, dogs, groundhogs, rabbits, deer, opossum, raccoon, vermin, as well as many kinds of birds, reptiles, fish, and amphibians. Fairies, or fae, are the native population of Harper's Ferry. Humans are newcomers. Gender rights are equal among the fairies. Gender roles are sometimes reversed, and many fae are unisex or asexual. Some fairies have wings, and some do not. Some fae appear as humans, but their sizes tend to be smaller, and others do not show themselves to mundanes at all. Harper's fairies include fairies, pixies, sprites, nymphs, dryads, sylphs, elves, dwarves, and gnomes, including brownies, leprechauns, and types of gnomes. Monsters like goblins, trolls, and ogres are also types of fairies, but they are often considered separate because they tend to be more beastly than the fairer fae. Drogo, Pickwick, Davis, Arta, Tina, Spritz, and Cinch became the best-known fairies after the Civil War period. Folklore and bardic notes followed them with scrolls and songs over the years. These citizen heroes were not the most powerful or famous, but they were a group of fey friends who shared their stories. Years later, their written journals form pieces of an incredible historic legacy. Drogo the architect was part gnome, part dwarf, and 
part half-elf, hybrid mutt. Pickwick was a gnome inventor-tinkerer. Davis was a dwarf adventurer, druid ranger. Drogo, Davis, and Pickwick often worked together on projects. These three had a trade-for-trade concept of collaboration. They affectionately called their way of trading items, services, and coins scratchback. Arta, Tina, and Spritz were free spirits. They believed in giving freely based on the concept of free love and unconditional love. Free spirits, sometimes called sprites, are considered polyamorous, meaning that they think it is possible to love more than one person at the same time, or at different times, a concept which is shocking heresy to humans. According to Fay Love, no one can owe anyone anything, nor own them, only temporarily possess them. Cinch tended to be more of a loner than the others. Cinch preferred to do Cinch's own thing amongst the trees. Tree elves rarely leave their own villages in the trees. However, Cinch played a pivotal role in the fate of Harper's Ferry and became a famous world traveler and bard. As our story begins, the land of Harper's Ferry has fallen under the control of human devil lopers, who worship lords of greed and jealousy. A popular saying in the fairy is, Big and small names can fade away the same. There are many names here written that would fade away, if not for you reading and remembering. Thank you, dear reader. Blessed be Harper's Ferry.